everyone and welcome to a brand new series on my channel called 1010 Beyond the Vlogger. The idea is to sit a different motor vlogger in the saddle every week, ask them 10 questions and only give them 10 minutes to answer them all. Well actually it goes a little bit beyond that as well because ever since I became a motor vlogger I've always wanted to find out more about my fellow YouTubers. What sort of real person is behind the avatar? What makes them tick when they're not out riding bikes and making videos of wisdom for us all to watch countless hours of? Well I aim to address that and my first ever guest is a chap called Bruce, probably more better known to you and I as Teapot One. Bruce, welcome. Good, good. I didn't realise I was your, fir your first one. I was popping your cherry. I didn't realise. Oh, 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 listen, you've got the gold badge already. So. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, I'm going to start the rev counter now. You're happy to go. Good luck getting me to answer these in 10 minutes. We'll go. <laughs> Maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> Let's try. Question. <laughs> okay, Bruce, give us a bit about your background. Tell us who Bruce is. Uh, I'm Bruce Smart, now sort of known as Teapot One, uh, 44 years of age, originally born and bred northeast of Scotland, north of Aberdeen, uh, lived in Glasgow for a wee while, went to uni there, and then moved to London in 2000 to join the Old Bill, I'm afraid, and I've been down here ever since, uh, spent about 18 years in the Old Bill, and came out last year, I left the Old Bill last year to go full-time on, on YouTube as Teapot One. And Teapot One came around because 2012, I took a break from, from the old bill and went around the world on a GSX-R1000 in a trip that was called Teapot One. And that's it. <laughs> Did you take that trip on as escapism? The, the trip came about because uh, I'd always wanted to ride a bike. I'd never, ever done it. You know, my my mom and my mom in particular was very anti motorbike. So it's just, it's never anything that was on my radar growing up. You know, it's just... Mom and dad wouldn't allow it, so that was it. It wasn't happening. Um, and then, obviously, as I became a man, and it was always something I fancied doing, but it just never happened. Then, sadly, my my mom was fighting cancer, uh, and she lived with me for a while while she went through her treatment. Excuse me. And um, one day, long way around with Ewan and Charlie came on the TV, you know, a repeat series. And um, I'd seen Long Way Round when it first came out and loved it and always thought, I'm going to do that. I, I want to do that at some point. But thought I'll do it when I retire. You know, I had a job, a mortgage. Mm -hmm. I have my son, all this sort of stuff. I thought I can't. I can't just bugger off and do a. Am I, am I okay to swear? Okay. It's the internet. Right, so, um, it's the internet. You can strip naked if you want. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll not. I'll not subject you to that. Um, yeah. So we were watching this long way round, and I just said to my mom, you know, I would love to do that. It's all right for for you and McGregor, you know, multi millionaire, a list celeb, blah 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 blah. And mom just said, look, you've always spoke about doing a trip like that, and you've always spoke about riding a bike, but you've never done it. Don't don't get to my stage where you face the end and you regret what you've not done. You know, if, as far as we know, you only get one shot at this. So. Look after those that you love, but live your life. And and those three words, live your life, literally there and then, sort of, it was like a like a rocket going off, you know, it was it was that moment. Shit, I, that's I, I need to do this. So I, I, I went online there and then and, and booked my direct access. By the time I'd done my test, mom was very near the end. She'd um, admitted herself to a low end of life hospice because she didn't want to pass away in my flat, bless her. So I, I passed my test, picked up my brand new G6R600 that I'd, I'd bought and had waiting for me at the local dealership. So I picked that up, put on my Power Ranger outfit and rode my bike to the, the hospice, walked into mum's ward and the keys and said, I've done it. I've, I've passed my test. So she gave me a big hug and she said, look, promise me you'll do that trip. So I promised her and sadly, I think five days later, she, she lost a battle. So it was, you know, then it was like, right, I've, I've got to do this. Yeah. I yeah. genuinely thought I'll have to wait till I retire. You know, I can't, I can't afford it. I haven't got the time. I can't do it. And then um, I happened to be at work one day and I happened to be London's finest and he turned around and pulled a gun on me and, and pulled the trigger and, it, you know, I literally stared down the barrel of the gun and it went click. And um, that was a bit of a, a sort of, oof, it sort of brings you to ground very quickly. And I suddenly thought, you know what, that's a sign. You only have one, you've only one chance in life. So let's go for it. 
And uh, over a few beers and a curry that night with some mates, I told them about my dream to to do this trip. And they said, well, that is your mom sending you a sign. Awesome. Get on with it. Get it done. So, and, and that indeed, it. Bruce, that, that has been your mantra um, all the way through as well, hasn't it? Live your life. It has. It's something that is is well, I would say very dear to my heart. But it's it's everything now. You know, I I live my life by that saying: live your life. You know? yeah. Look after my family and those that are close to me. But yeah. you got to make the most of of any opportunities that are. Tell me about your family, Bruce. What do you do to switch off when you're not out vlogging and riding motorbikes? What do you do to get away from it all? And another thing I want to combine into this question is, do you ever switch off or are you forever looking at your stats on YouTube and seeing how many more yeah. subscribers you've got? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably the worst person to ask this because this this is my first year of doing it full full time. Right. And um, I, I, I haven't found that work-life balance yet you know i'm still i'm still sat editing sometimes at two three four in the morning and then that means you don't get up till later in the day and i'll do that seven days a week sometimes you know and at the detriment I think, to spending quality time with my wife and and all this i mean it's lockdown so it's a unique situation isn't it this last year but yeah, i've definitely been aware that uh, I've I've not got a work life balance over this last year. I've just been working all the time, so that's something I need to sort out for sure. Yeah. And yeah, I'm constantly <laughs> I'm constantly checking my like the subscriber count on YouTube and Instagram. It's so ridiculous as a grown man, but I am I, I am you know you 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 post a vid and the first thing you do is like oh how many subscribers in the last hour because. That, that's how you measure in the success of that vid, really. It's ridiculous, but that's just, yeah, part and parcel I, of it. I, I thought that only happened to a newbie like myself, so I'm delighted to know that even though you're full-time now, it, it, you, you, you're still doing that. Um, going back to your Around the World tour, uh, Bruce, and by the way, folks, if you haven't seen it, go on to Bruce's channel now. It's unbelievable. It's uh, fantastic. It, to me, Bruce, and this is the highest compliment I can pay you, I felt as though I was doing the trip with you. <laughs> I felt as though I was right oh, with you. So, so well done. But you did touch on finding it difficult when you got back after that trip. So yeah, I did. Um, I get. I said before, you know, it's not something I'd ever dealt with before. But but coming back, I I really struggled settling in. Um, I think there was a few issues. I, I developed a heart condition while I was away, um, an, an erratic heartbeat, which I also got dengue fever, and they're not sure if that maybe triggered it or not. But I was put on like beta blockers and medication and things to to combat that before they before they did the operation. And I I think that the beta blockers brought me down a lot, and I I think that probably together with the fact that I was a bit down about being back and it was a bit of an anti-climax and you know it was just a really bad time for a year I just I couldn't settle I really couldn't settle and probably took me about a year to 18 months to sort of get myself back into the swing of things of being of being back so yeah it was it, the, the mental side of it, of it was something I'd never ever had to deal with before to be honest and you know all of a sudden you find yourself kind of struggling to be honest and it was it was nice to have people around about me that I could chat to about it. You certainly don't have that problem when you're not allowed 5K away from the house at the moment. There's no problem settling back know. in after your, after your know. journey. <laughs> it's the opposite, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's one thing I notice uh, uh, very much so in your videos. You're very tech savvy. You're really up to speed on production levels and maintaining high production values. What do vloggers need to do to protect their brand and safeguard their channel? I think um, that's an interesting question. I think the best thing you can do on, on YouTube is be yourself because the longevity that's going to be required, I, th I think there's two ways of looking at it. If this is just a, a time, if it's just a hobby, then, you know, I, I suppose you, you might handle it differently than if you want to make this your profession, if you want to go full-time. Because if you want to go full-time, you're going to have to, you're going to have to put in a lot of time and effort over a, a protracted length of time, particularly in the motorcycle niche, because we're a we're a very we're a very very niche market within YouTube itself. Well, we're a very niche market, motovlogging within a very niche market, the motorcycle market 
within YouTube, you know what I mean, you know? So the best advice would be just be yourself. And as, as you're growing, as you're building your channel, just establish your own style. Do you know what I mean? Like, by all means, copy other people. But what I would say is copy the bits that you like from the channels that you, you watch. I mean, I, I hardly watch any motorbike channels, to be perfect. With you. You're judging your audience all the time. Come here, we're getting pressed for time here, so mm. I'm going to move on straight to the next. Oh god, yeah, yeah. Your, your ultimate place to visit on a bike and your favourite bike to do it on. One bike, one place. What would it now, be? I would. I wanted to do Mongolia. That was supposed to be part of my my original world trip, um, and because it was supposed to be the part of the world trip, I want to do it on a sports bike. I know it's going to be bloody hard, but if I can only go there once on one bike, it would be Mongolia, probably on a Jixa third. Although the S1000RR is, the new S1000RR is my tall bike. So I'll stick with the Jixa third. Are you sensitive to criticism when, when, when you get the people who, you know, all they're doing is trolling really mm. and they've got nothing good to say? Does it cut deep when you see that on your channel? Never used to. It never used to. It's like water off a duck's back. You know, I think uh, to be a copper, you have to have thick skin anyway. Oh, and um, oh. But I've definitely noticed over, over this last lockdown, I've found myself biting a lot in comments. And, you know, that's not something I would normally do. Um, I'm hoping it's because we've been locked up for, you know, the last three, four months or whatever. So when normality comes back, I'm hoping that's the end of that. Normally, I'm not bothered by it. You know, it's, you just block or take the piss out of them. But uh, this last couple of months, yeah, I found myself, I found myself biting all the time. Is there ever a day you wake up, Bruce, and you think I can't be bothered today to go and ride a bike? I can't be bothered to make a video. Like, what drives you? What motivates you every morning? You know, <clears throat> this makes me because yeah, the, uh, this last lockdown, I felt like that. I've I've actually felt. I know that I just need to get out on the bike, but I've just found myself going, I can't be bothered. I just can't be bothered today. You know, and you think that's ridiculous because I'm living the dream. You know, I'm I'm doing what I love for a living. I, I have found myself just, I, I just can't be bothered. I can't be bothered to, to sit and edit today. And then, you know, my wife will say, well, just go out on the bike, just go local. And I'm, I just can't be bothered. So again, I'm hoping it's just the lockdown thing because I, I went out Tuesday and it was it was great to be back out on a bike. You know, it's been long since I've done that. I, I think just to get out on the bike and just be a biker, you know, don't have any cameras. Don't worry about talking to a camera. Don't be worried about planning what's your next shot going to be, you know, the transition's going to be. Just go out and enjoy riding a bike. I actually had to go to the dentist this morning with a bad toothache and I went on my motorbike and I can't mm. tell you how happy I was because I wasn't out filming. I wasn't making a video. I had a genuine <laughs> excuse to go somewhere beyond five kilometer lockdown as well. So, and it was like freedom yeah. with the most annoying toothache. <laughs> so, yeah. okay, Bruce, I yeah. think we've just ran out of time. I could sit and talk to you all day. Oh no. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're way beyond the 10 minutes. Bruce, an absolute cool, pleasure to talk to you. Absolute yeah, pleasure. Yeah, definitely do. Thanks again, man. And, you yeah. should do it again. Uh, uh, please, God. Well, hopefully one of these days we'll be able to tear up the same strip of tarmac. So <laughs> I've got I've got to get over to the Emerald Isle. So um, if I'm coming over, I'll give you a shout. It'll be great to meet up and, and meet you in person. A hundred percent. I would love that. Thank you so much for your time, Bruce. Well, folks, that's the first interview ticked off the list, and I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Please subscribe to my channel, Wheelie Good TV, as there's lots more to come in the near future. And indeed, this time next week, there'll be somebody else sitting in the saddle. But for now, I'm Dave Perry. Over and out.